If one of the connection criteria in your trust is going to be the network path, then it's really a good idea to set up actually two trusts. One that makes reference to the network path by its fully qualified domain name and the other that makes reference to it by its local name. Now that's really because depending on how your domain name lookup is handled, a computer may return one or the other uh, when looking for the name of that computer. So um, just to give you an example, if you're using SDK-based connections, the SDK-based connections do not do a reverse name lookup, and typically they return the smaller number, or the smaller, uh, just the local name. In this case, it would be this local name right here. The API-based applications, they tend to do a reverse name lookup, and they, re they return the fully qualified domain name, including the domain, and so that would be something like that. So uh, since you... You know, if you are setting up the um, a trust and you would like this uh, to work uh, under either circumstance, whether it uses the fully qualified or not, then set up two trusts. Actually, it's even more complicated than that, depending on how your domain is set up. Uh, sometimes the you know, the uh, I mean, sometimes you, you you will not find that a hard and fast rule. Sometimes you will get back a, a local name, and sometimes it will be a fully qualified domain name. Now if you look at the bottom in the notes on this slide, you also find there's some advice on how to determine what the actual name is that is being returned. And that is simply look at the message log when you attempt a connection. In the message log we will show you what name we're getting from the connection credentials or what the connection, uh, the connecting client is named. So you can then base your trust on that name that you see in the log. And one more thing, if you are doing SDK-based connections, if you put a dollar sign uh, in the machine name, that basically means that it will match any machine name that's going to be within that domain. Now, so far, I haven't been really telling you the whole truth about one of those connection credentials, and that's the IP address. See, when you specify the IP address as a trust, you have to also specify a net mask. As you can see here, I've specified an IP address that ends in zero. This is a, a class C subnet. And um, ending in zero here, and with the net mask ending in zero, this, if you do the, uh, the, the traditional uh, net mask in a TCP IP routing table kind of operation with logical ending, it basically means that any IP address within the range of zero to 255 is going to be allowed. Now, if you were to switch this over to, say, 240, uh, I've forgotten exactly what it is, but I believe it's anything from 0 to 16 or 0 to 15 is going to be allowed. I mean, there's subtleties where you can specify individual, or excuse me, specify through net masks an IP address where, where it basically allows a range of IP addresses to come in. And that's truly beyond the scope of this class to get into that routing, routing table logic and the logical anding. So if you're familiar, you know, those of you familiar with TCP IP routing uh, will be familiar with this topic. Uh, for anybody else, to be honest, I, I find it's a lot easier if uh, I need to create 16 trusts to just create, or to, to have 16 computers trust, I just create 16 trusts labeled 1 through 16. And if I mask this as 255 in all octets, that indicates it needs a 100% ma match. So I would just create a MyTrust, for example, MyTrust2 that matches to that, MyTrust3 that matches to 3, etc. Because this implies a full match is required. Now we describe that in the slide here. If you look at our, um, this is our uh, IP addresses and net masks. If you're specifying zeros in all octets for both the IP address and the net mask, then the incoming IP address is going to be allowed basically no matter what, because the, the result of the logical AND between this incoming address and this net mask is going to match what was defined over here. So see, we're trying to match how it's been defined in the IP address. So I'll give you another example. Here's an instance in which we've defined the IP address to be 0. 
our net mask is ending in zero in the last octet, the IP address that we get from the connecting client ends in 121. Okay. The result of the logical AND between this, let me describe this better, between this and this, the logical ANDing result of that ends up being 168.0, which as you can see matches this, which means since these two match, we are the trust mat, the trust uh, IP address that we've specified matches the result of the AND, we do allow a connection. Now compare that to this, in which our IP address is 168, the machine IP address that we get is 175. Now that 255 in the third octet indicates we need a 100% match for these, but of course when we do the logical anding, we don't get that match at all. The comparison of this to this fails, so we do not get a connection there. So we could go on and on, but the uh, suffice it to say, if you are familiar with the uh, TCP IP routing table and the network destination and net masking capabilities, this supports that as well.